Howdy, folks, and welcome back. Creepy Kentucky in here. And I'm Uncle Bill, and welcome to a very special edition of this program. It's a special patron requested review. Our good buddy Wayne, aka Carta Derdention, requested one that's 100% positive we've never talked about, we've never reviewed on the show in the 17 and a half year history of the show. Because it's one that I'd never seen up until now. And Uncle Bill, you were a little bit shocked by that, right? Yeah, because I don't know why. I just always assumed that you had seen this movie. Even though, like, I know we never watched it or anything. Which that would have been a hell of a movie to, like, watch back in the day. <laughs> like, everybody there in the room. So, <laughs> like, because I'd seen this movie multiple times. And always liked it. So well, I do remember I when it when it came out, like people were going crazy about it. Everybody was talking about it and shit. Cause it came out when we were like seniors in high school, I think. Juniors or seniors in high school. And yeah. I remember like just there was a buzz about it, but I never really did go and watch it. And it's not one that I'd rented or anything, but uh Boogie Knots, nineteen ninety seven. Directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, who uh, has got a pretty huge cult following. Uh, I know we reviewed uh, his movie, There Will Be Blood, when that came out, because I remember, I remember you, got that. A, yeah. you got a copy of that to review. But like Punch Drunk Love and Magnolia, or like yep. a couple of his other really popular ones. And he, a music video director, oddly enough, like I was looking back at his career and... Uh, did Fiona Apple music videos and Radiohead and shit like that. So definitely uh, interesting uh, that he come from that because I mean, I'm not going to say all music video directors are this way because um, fucking Michael Bay was a music video director too. And you can say what you want to about Michael Bay, but his movies always look fucking fantastic. But usually you know, music video directors, their cinematography and everything are usually not on point like this. But I was the first thing that I was crazy impressed with in Boogie Nights was the visuals and, you know, because it's set in the 70s and the, mm -hmm. the way it looks and everything. Very cinematic, if you will. So it's kind of surprising to me that he came from a music video background because you normally don't see that with, you know, these music video directors. No, and you're right, though. The The big thing about this movie is that it actually looks like it takes place in the 70s, and it's like the cinematography in it is amazing. There's a lot of great, like, a lot of great shots in it that I can still remember to this day, and, like, shots of, like, the roller skating girl from behind where they're, you know, following her through, like, the party and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and the, the camera is kind of, like, right on her, like, going through all these different people. And then, like, several different shots that, that are in the film that are just like really memorable. And one scene in particular in this film, I've never forgotten people reference it to this day because it's so fucking nerve wracking. And when I first saw it, I was like, I knew like when I first saw it, that it was just so good because the tension is like, and the way that he builds that scene up is great, but that's, that's coming later, but got a great cast. You've got, I don't like Mark Wahlberg in much of anything. I just don't fucking like that guy. I don't like his acting, but he's he's okay. He reminds you too much of John Cena. <laughs> I guess. Like he just reminds me too much of somebody who can't act. Um Julianne Moore is great. Burt Reynolds is great. Uh Heather Graham is great. Like pretty much and William H. Macy especially is great too. You know, uh and I was thinking this too, because I like some of his movies. But everything that I've ever seen Burt Reynolds in, he's fucking fantastic. That's true. I mean, even yeah. the stuff that I don't go back and rewatch very often, like just a, I think he's, he may be underrated or he may have been underrated as an actor, but. Well, you, here's the thing that happened to Burt Reynolds. That's kind of a, a, a you know, a injustice really. People forget Burt Reynolds started out and he was in deliverance. I mean, he was like a solid dramatic actor. And then for whatever reason, he got typecast in those fucking like 
Smokey and the Bandit movies Mass and Little all that stuff. In Texas yeah. and-, and that was his whole career during the 80s, and people just saw him as Longest like a Yard, the original Longest Yard had Burt Reynolds in. It. Yeah. And I mean, there was, movie too. there was a couple of deviations in there, but mostly he just did those crappy comedies during the Well, 80s. yeah. I mean, I think like Smokey and the Bandit was late 70s. Yeah. So after that, like he was he was doing Hooper and Best Little Whorehouse in Texas and whatever else, you know. And I'm not. I mean, Smoking the Bandit, I guess, but like any of the other ones after that, no. I just, I, you know, and I don't ever really want to watch Smoking the Bandit again either, to be honest with you. He just he got pigeonholed into that kind of like role, and into that then people seen him in a certain way. But he was a great dramatic actor before all that crap even happened and i think later in his life when he got this movie and like there was a couple other ones he did like late in his life mm. that were really good he was great in striptease as like the yeah. congressman or whatever and a couple other movies too i'm trying to like i mean i'm just thinking like I, i'm not an expert on burt reynolds or anything but it just seems like anything that i've ever really seen him in he does just a excellent job you know and it's it's shocking because like you said he's mainly known as you know known for those stupid 70s comedies that he did so anyway this is probably the role that kind of revitalized his career though yeah we're Um, gonna talk about it Uh, it's like you said it's set in 1977 and the funny thing is man and i was thinking about this too i was like god damn boys 20 years difference between 1977 and the year that this movie came out. That just doesn't seem, you know, but you know, um, Burt Reynolds in this place, Jack Horner, which is perfect name. He's adult filmmaker who is always looking for up and comers, if you will, new faces and new Peters. And, right. Uh, He's in a bar and comes across uh, the busboy Eddie Adams is the character's name originally, and just likes his look. Doesn't realize that he's got a gin- ginormous schlong, perfect for mm-hmm. movies. But just likes his look and kind of stumbles across him and talks him into joining in with his uh, with his crew to to bang some babes, if you will. I think that that scene is hilarious too, the way that he meets him. And I always remember that scene because he goes to the back and like, he's talking to him and like, uh, Mark Wahlberg's like, so what do you want me? You want, you want to see it? Or he's like, cause it's just like, he's done this so many times that he thinks that, that that's what he wants to do. He's, he's like, I'll play stories. with it. He's like, I'll play with it for $10 or something like that. Like, yeah. And, uh, he's like, what are you talking about? And then like, he, quickly figures out like what he's talking about so that's kind of the introduction of those two characters really so that yeah this is 77 and this is back when porn was an actual film 35 millimeter film which is yeah. big again today you know people vinegar syndrome buying it and you know impulse pictures and everything like that back then it was like high dollar you know and the the theaters and stuff it were big in big cities. So they made crazy money back then too. And he becomes, Eddie becomes the character of Dirk Diggler and kind of becomes a, I would say a porn star. He was a superstar there for a few years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the, the through line of the movie that he becomes this huge, well, in a lot of different ways, huge star. And, uh, those movies kind of take off and like all the people surrounding him and, and Jack Horner kind of like, are just in this one big party. And the movie is clearly based on John Holmes. I mean, his life, like a lot of the stuff that happened to John Holmes Mm -hmm. is kind of mirrored in this movie. And, you know, a lot of shit with the cocaine, a lot of shit with the getting in trouble with the law and things like that. What year of, did, uh, wasn't there a movie about John Hunt, like Wonderland or something like that? Wasn't that yeah, the name of it? Which is a good movie with Val It's Cameron. actually, yeah, yeah. 
say that's a pretty good movie too underrated not yeah. really the same i mean it's more about like isn't it like a murder or mystery type deal it is yeah it's not anything like this movie really but that um, was a true story though right yeah yeah that I might mean, be a good one to look at i'd like to watch that one again because it's been a while but yeah i mean i guess it would be based on because john holmes wasn't he or was he not like one of the probably the first male porn star he had to be yeah like the well, first really noticeable wanted to, yeah, male wanted porn him. star yeah but so, so like kind of as you go through it it, it kind of is the trajectory of his career too so he gets really huge like popular people know who he is he gets into drugs and shit and gets into some kind of like illegal elements and hooked up with the wrong people uh which you see happen in this movie too and like as that's happening like he becomes less and less able to perform in these movies which is really the only thing that he could do mm-hmm. and then he's <laughs> i don't know if he, if john holmes ever did this but there's a whole side plot in this movie where it, Mark Wahlberg is like, he's trying to get into a music career and him and, uh, oh God, what's the guy's fucking name? Yeah, he was in um, Step Brothers and all yeah. that. Uh, John C. Riley. Him and John yeah. C. Riley are like trying to like be this music group and they go to see this producer and everything. But like the thing that he is like, he fails at everything else. Like he's not good at anything and he's kind of stupid. Like, at that. right. And his life really starts to crumble and fall apart. You know, he yeah. gets, gets exiled from the business and just meets shady character after shady character. It's kind of, and then, you know, towards the end, kind of redeems himself a little bit, I would say. And they give you one last shot at the end. That's just fucking. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Was that yeah. the yeah, Nobody version? saw that coming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, But leading up to that, though, there's this whole thing where, so the movie leads up basically to his ego getting out of control. Like, that's the whole kind of, like, thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just, like, his ego, and he thinks he can do all this other stuff, like act in regular movies and do music, and, and he can't do any of those things, but he thinks he can. Then he gets into the drugs and stuff, and he's, like, doing stuff. for and And the scene that always stuck with me in this, like, is the scene where he goes and who is that guy that plays that character? Cause he's amazing in it and he's been in tons of shit. Um, yeah, I, I remember the face, but he's the guy that played Dr. Octopus. I think. Oh yeah. Uh, the fuck is his Molin name? or something like that. Wasn't his name? Yeah. Yeah. It's something like that, but I can't think of his first Alfred anyway, Molina. That's it. Alfred, Alfred Molina. Yeah. So there's this whole scene where, he he's going over to this guy's house and he's a drug dealer. Alfred Molina is the drug dealer and they're going to rob him and they know they're going to rob him. And he, you know, of course he doesn't know that or anything like that, but so they walk in and the guy's coked out of his fucking mind and they're all like waiting on each other to, to see what's going to happen. But while this is going on, there's this weird, like, little dude in the corner throwing fucking firecrackers, like, the <laughs> whole time. Do you remember this? Yeah, it's like little, yeah, little firecrackers. He's lighting them and throwing them in the air. Yeah, and it's like, you, and everybody's jumping and on edge, like, all the characters, are, they're sitting there, but they're like, that guy keeps throwing the firecrackers, and everybody's like, you know, because they know what's getting ready to happen, but it's just making it more and more tense as, like, the, as time goes by. So they just that whole scene and then the lead up to that goes on forever. And I think they're playing sister Christian and he's like jamming out to fucking sister Christian and like all that there's music and noise and everything's leading up to this getting ready to happen, this robbery. And then it happens. And of course they fuck it up and like so the people start getting shot and barely get out. Like he like Mark Wahlberg barely gets out of there. It's just, one of the best like tense tense kind of like sequences like that that i've seen in a movie yeah there was another uh like an armed robbery that happens with uh don Cheadle. do you remember his character in the movie oh yeah 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 he's like, the like cowboy. That's an, yeah that's another yeah. one that's 
um you know i mean it, it's almost like something that would really happen in real life like oh i would have that fucking look right so yeah yeah <clears throat> but yeah i mean and i liked it, i liked there's the a movie lot of great scenes. Yeah. there's uh heather graham and it's fantastic uh, heather graham julianne moore's great like they play like a they're not mother daughter but they're kind of like that's the dynamic in the movie and they're both really just fucked up like thomas jane is crazy fucking like yeah. one of the crazy guys in the robbery too uh but the so. other scene that always got me, man, is like William H. Macy plays like this producer who his wife is constantly like fucking other people and like for the films, but also just like on the side. And she's constantly just kind of like, you know, degrading him and stuff. And there's there's a one shot scene. I'm pretty sure this is filmed in one shot. That is amazing where he walks out to his car. He gets a gun. He walks back in, walks into the room where they're like his wife is making love with some guy and shoots both of them, walks back into frame and then like kills himself. Like as the camera kind of like cuts away. It's a great scene, man. It's pretty like, graphic too yeah. with him. Yeah. There's tons of scenes like that in the movie. So like, did he, was this his first big movie or did he do anything before this? Because it seems like the, question this is a pretty decent sized budget movie and the cast is pretty amazing. And I wonder what kind of, was it the music video thing that got him this, this job or, or what was the deal? Because it is very impressive. I mean, for a mainstream debut film, at least. I mean, I yeah, it, it looks like I'm impressive. looking at his thing. I'm looking at his IMDB here and it's like, he just did what looks like, little known films here like hard eight is the movie that he did directly before this and it's got john c Riley in it which kind of makes sense um i kind of remember that movie in a way but that's the that's all he really did before boogie nights hmm. okay but yeah i mean, I mean uh, like he does a shit ton of music videos snl which is weird. Then he does Punch Drunk Love. And then, like, this is what's funny. Coming off of Punch Drunk Love, he does There Will Be Blood, like, which is, like, one of the biggest movies of that year. And he really hasn't done a whole hell of a lot since then, man. No. I I was looking at some of his recent stuff, like Inherent Vice, I think, was one of the more recent actual movies that he did. Wasn't that his? Uh, Licorice Pizza is the last kind of, like, actual movie that he did here yeah it's just interesting is, though like uh that this i mean he had that one movie before but boogie nights was like the i guess the theatrical mainstream debut and you would never think that this was like a first time director or a young filmmaker at the time no it, it's it really is like an amazing kind of uh introduction to a filmmaker like maybe tarantino is one of the only ones that's done a movie that's that around that time period. That's that kind of like spectacular for a first time kind of, of course. And his, the funny thing is, is aside from, um, there will be blood. I've not seen any of these other movies. I've never seen Magnolia or, uh, you never seen Magnolia. And I have seen that. Yeah. No, I I don't like Tom Cruise though. So I can't fucking like that movie. No matter what you you didn't like it. It wouldn't no count. No, That's got fucking bomb cruising. But anyway, I mean, it's interesting, uh, you know, request for us to review uh, this movie, and uh, it was fun. To, I had fun watching it. It was one of those deals where I was, I, I we had just drove home from Michigan that day, and I was like, well, I'll watch like because it's a it's a longer movie. It's like two and a half hours long or something like that. I watched maybe half of it tonight and the rest of it tomorrow, and I ended up staying up late and watched all of it because i like i just yeah i was into it so um yeah i really liked it quite a bit i you know movies from this time period it's set in this time period i just really like anyway and stories like this i'm a big fan of too remind me of great that, oh go ahead it reminded me a little bit of that movie blow with uh johnny Depp. yeah that's that's what i was gonna uh, the music 
the way they incorporate the music into this movie and the scenes move really quick. It's got a great pace and just like all the characters that are introduced are really interesting and the, the acting is good. And it's, you can't really get bored watching this movie. Like it's kind of impossible. So, yeah, I mean, this would definitely be one that's whenever that 4k or something comes out that I'll probably end up getting it. Cause I don't, like I said, I don't own it or anything. I end up watching it on voodoo, but, yeah, that is Boogie Nights from 1997, boss. Give us the thumbs up. Up your butt. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a if you do. I don't. want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Let's keep our community growing here on YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to touch nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you dare yeah. touch it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpit.com. Simply the best horror shirts on T Public. There are others. But they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1.